Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we'll walk you through how to use the Pandas Data Reader. Let's open up a new Jupyter Notebook and get started. Okay, here I am at a new Jupyter Notebook. Now, Pandas Data Reader actually supports a wide array of APIs. It used to support the Yahoo Finance API, but since Yahoo got bought by Verizon, they've seemed to close their API or disabled it, or at least disabled Pandas' ability to read it. However, the Google Finance API is still open and readable, as well as other APIs. You can check out the documentation on Pandas Data Reader linked in the resource notes in case you want more information on that. But let's go ahead and show you how you can actually use Pandas Data Reader. We'll say import pandas underscore data reader. You can do tab to autocomplete this, and you'll say dot data as web. And then what we'll also typically do when working with Pandas Data Reader is import the datetime library. That way we can actually pass in datetime objects to Pandas Data Reader. So what we'll do is we'll specify a start date. So we'll say date time, date time. And then what we're going to do is say, let's just say 2015. And then we'll set an end date to be date time dot date time. And we'll set this to be 2017, January 1st. So I'm just going to get two years worth of data from the first of 2015 to the first of 2017. And let's go ahead and choose Facebook as our stock. So you create a variable that you want to be your data frame, and then you call web dot, and you're gonna call the data reader method off of this. And then the data reader method is going to take a few things. It's going to take a name, the data source, and then a start date and an end date. So let's go ahead and do this. The, whoops, the name of this is just going to be the ticker for the stock, which you can just look up online. For Facebook, it's capital F and capital B. And then we're going to connect using Google and then we pass in that start variable that we created and then that end variable. And then you run this, and this may get blocked if you have a firewall, but typically it works pretty well. And what you can do is then just say Facebook head. And then once you run that, you have this nice little data frame here. So this data frame starts with a date time index where you just have daily data points for the stock and you have the opening price, the high price for that day, the low price for that day, and then the closing price for that day, as well as the volume of stock actually traded. Now keep in mind, uh, this closing price is going to represent with the Google API, the adjusted closing price. So that can take things into account like a stock split. So that's really all you need to know about the web data reader as far as what we're gonna use it for this course, uh, continuing on. But I wanna show you some experimental options. So if you've done the reading and the extra resources, learning about what are options, why to use options, how options work, and how to read an options table, you can actually get an options table using Pandas Data Reader. Now keep in mind, this is still technically experimental, so it doesn't always work, but typically for people based in the United States, it tends to work as long as you don't have a firewall blocking it. But in order to get the options table, you can say from Pandas Data Reader dot data, import options. And then we'll say FB options equals options FB Google. And then we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get our data frame. So we'll say options df is equal to, and you grab this FB options that you just created and then say get. And what you can do is you can actually get call data, forward data, etc., put data, but we'll just get the options data itself. And then we'll say an argument or parameter, expiry. And then we're going to say for the expiration, FB options, call expiry dates, and then grab index zero here. So if you run this, you should be able to get out an options data frame. So if you check the options, the F, let's just check the head of it. You get something that looks like this, where you have the bid prices, the ask prices, etc., underlying price, and then that quote time. So if you want to learn more about how to actually read these options tables, we still haven't really dived into finance in general, so we'll leave this for a later topic, but you can go ahead and check out the resource links now in case you want to read up on how to actually interpret this options table. For now, just wanted to present it to you that Pandas Data Reader is capable of reading these options. Okay, thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture.